Hello everyone, I'm Rick Jenkins, publisher at SC Biz News, the media company serving 100,000 business executives throughout South Carolina. Welcome to SC Biz TV, and welcome to another episode in our ongoing video series, Coffee With. Today I'm having coffee with Steve Parker. Steve is the president at Parker Land Surveying. He and his wife Pam, who is the company's CEO, founded Parker and Land Surveying in 2008. Now they have three offices and about 50 employees doing business statewide. Steve, welcome. Thank you, thank you. It's good to have you here. Good to be here. Now, our studio, uh, folks, uh, or at least this studio that we're filming in, is in Greenville, and you work over in the Charleston area, right? That's correct. And so uh, I hope you didn't come all the way over here just to film this, but you had other stuff happening, right? It happened to be on the way to see somebody about a dog. Oh, got it. Enough said. Uh, we want to talk all about Parker Land Surveying here, of course, but I want to talk about you a little bit. You and uh, your wife, Pam, you founded the company in 2008. Uh, what's it like working with your wife? Now, she's the CEO. You're the president. Who's the boss, man? That's correct. Um, she is definitely. And uh, <laughs> so I wanted, or we wanted to um, start like that to begin with so that there could be some accountability for me if she needed to keep me straight. I got it. So, uh, yep. It's worked out well. Yep. I think all us married folk can identify with that quite well. Uh, you all started this sucker in 2008, and that is not a good time, Steve. Uh, to be starting a business because we all know what happened in 08. You struggled for a while. Yes, um, we started in August and the market collapsed in October. So <laughs> I think we were in the mountains or somewhere. And when that happened and I looked at Pam and said, this is not part of the business plan, honey. Right. So hang on. And right. we did and we uh, made some adjustments and um, things slowly started to improve. Uh, as we got closer to 2010, I think. Right. Then you had another another tough year last year. No, it wasn't too bad last it year. It wasn't too bad for you? Yeah, we were very fortunate. We had invested in uh, a lot of infrastructure that was already in place, Yeah. which allowed us to pivot and uh, send technicians uh, to work remotely. And our field staff are already working independently anyway, so... Um, our revenue was almost the same as the year before, so we're very grateful. Well, good for you. I know it wasn't that way for everyone. It wasn't that way for us. Uh, you know, we had to pivot like so many folks did, uh, but I'm glad you came through it good. And now we're moving on, hopefully, and that's in our rearview mirror. Absolutely. You and Pam, South Carolina born and bred, right? Right. Known each other basically almost your whole life. Basically our um, whole lives. Uh, we both grew up one street over from each other in a little suburb of Charleston called Hanahan. Um, that's kind of in between North Charleston and Goose Creek, if you've ever been <laughs> yes. there. Yep. So, um, so yeah, it's a it's a neat story. Um, I was uh, a veteran from the Army, and a friend of mine was graduating from the Citadel, and uh, Pam happened to be his little sister, and he gave me permission to date her. And 21 years later, here we are. Right, worked out good. Yes, you know. Uh, when, when I was kind of preparing for you to come in, I was looking on your website, and I noticed that uh, you have your core values, love, excellence, and integrity, which I've put up here. Uh, and, and I was struck by that, uh, that you had it prominently on your website. And that's why I just wanted to use it here. Talk to us about that. Why, had, why did you choose that, and why do you put that so prominently on your website? Well, um, the main reason that there is only three is because after looking at so many potential values or, or characteristics that we desire or strive for, most of those could fall under one of these three words. And so love, um, it pertains to the way we treat each other as staff at PLS, and it, it, it pertains to the way we communicate with clients and the public uh, as we're out providing these services. And if we're doing a good job of loving each other, and loving our clients, um, there's a lot of good byproducts that come from from treating others the way you want to be treated. Right. It's quite admirable. I also read on your website that you provide uh, a chaplain um, for your employees. 
How yeah, we sh we sure do. Um, I'm a member of a group called C12. It's a for lack, uh, it's a Christian CEO peer advisory group, and we meet monthly. And um, I came to hear about Corporate Chaplains of America through that group, and so um, we took that on. And the chaplain Josh comes um, and visits our locations monthly and does a report. Um, and if there's somebody in the hospital, it doesn't have to be the employee. It could be their loved one or child or, or whatever. And uh, so we wanted to let our employees know that we cared about them uh, emotionally and spiritually as as well as physically. So That is a wonderful, thoughtful perk. I have never uh, seen that before. So uh, uh, congratulations to you. I'm sure your staff appreciates that. You got about 50 of them now, right? Yeah, we're up to about 50. Um, we normally run about 45, but uh, this summer we have about six interns on board from local colleges and high schools. Um, a lot of them from the Citadel uh, are going to the Citadel for civil engineering. So we're trying to um, be proactive about recruiting and training. And so this is part of it is try to get as many people exposed to what we do as possible so that we, they might come back to us when they finish their education. I'll take that as a segue. Let's talk about what you do. Land surveying, we all know the basics of it, but uh, give me the definition. Tell me what you do. Well, the, the Webster's def definition is, uh, of a surveyor is one who keeps the nation's boundaries. And so um, for that, um, over time, their ways to measure have improved significantly um, from manual methods to now electronic distance measuring devices and GPS and uh, robotic total stations that turn angles and distances to um, drones that fly with uh, LIDAR payloads underneath that do 3D laser scanning from the air to ground-based scanning. Um, so it's a lot of different ways to measure things or to lay them out for construction of things. That new technology is amazing to me. So you're surveying land now via drone. Yes, we can do um, topographic surveys of property that would be wooded or cleared and get very high uh, vertical accuracy with LIDAR um, technology. LIDAR has been around for a while, but it's gotten a lot better. And the equipment that we made an investment in is the top that's available in the world. So the vertical accuracy is the best that you can invest in. We all have to stay on top of technology just to keep up and be competitive, right? That's correct. I hear you. Uh, Parker Land Surveying, you all are licensed to do business in South Carolina. And if I remember correctly, in order for a, a surveying company to do business in a state, you have to have an individual license for that state. You all have stuck in South Carolina. Is that your plan for the future? Yes, it is for the moment. Um, our philosophy is to be the best at where you're planted. And so we focus on South Carolina solely um, up until this point. Um, there's no need to expand if you can't do it well. And so we would rather get the excellence part right first before uh, scaling up, but we do have the infrastructure in place uh, to do so um, if we make that decision. Three offices now? Yeah, we have three offices. We have one in our main office is in Hanahan uh, near, near Charleston, and then we have uh, a, an office in Georgetown, which is right along 17 on the way to Myrtle Beach. Yep. And then we have an office we run some corporate things out of in Somerville, which is up near the next in development. There's a lot going on yep. up that way. So we yep. deliberately are investing in um, a, a spot to have an office, uh, maybe a new headquarters at some point. How much of your business is in the low country? Almost all of it. Um, we have come to the upstate uh, for certain clients. Um, we have engineering clients that do projects in the upstate. Um, we are in Columbia now working with a client doing a, a large scale 
uh, survey for the, v, the VA that's in Columbia. We've staked pile at Clemson for the expansion of the Kingsmore uh, Baseball Stadium um, and also work at Little John Coliseum there. Um, we've done some work for engineers that work for folks like Walmart in the upstate. So we've been around, but we just, we, right. we, we focus where we're been planted unless we're asked to, to travel. So. That's home. Right? Yeah. Let's talk about your services. I'm sure uh, you, you do a little bit of everything, but tell me where your sweet spot is. What's your bread and butter? We're really good at large scale boundary and topo surveys, which w would be used for um, civil design purposes or land development, uh, pre-design planning. Um, so that those other professionals that enjoy our service can make really good decisions for clients that are looking to develop property. What sets you apart? Other folks do that too. Um, I would say that since we're solely focused on geospatial survey services, that our, all of our profits go back into reinvestment into being set apart as opposed to um, other geospatial groups might work in a multidiscipline firm which means they're one of several profit centers and we have one. So all of our profits go back into improving us, our position in the geospatial market. Help me with geospatial. That's a fancy word for um, the geomatics. Geospatial is uh, geographical spatial measuring um, of, a, of anything. And survey is similar, um, but Survey can be a limiting term where geospatial is a broader term for, for what we do because geospatial is a part of everything you see, you know, whether it's a sidewalk, whether it's a, a manhole, whether it's a building, a runway, for instance. Anything that you see that's been built upon has been measured or laid out to be built. You all have done a whole lot of projects. Like I said, I, I poked around on your website for a while, to, uh, and, and I saw a bunch of them. Tell me, what's your most challenging? Um, several years ago, it hadn't been that long ago, but uh, just a few years ago, we got to be a part of the runway replacement project at the Charleston International Airport in Charleston for the Air Force. So they were our client, and um, we were the surveyor of record, and it was probably the most challenging Technically, uh, but it was the most rewarding because it was so challenging. And so we got through it and, and, and were recognized as a key player to making it having been a success. Right. It was a real accomplishment uh, when you were finished. You felt that. Oh, yeah. For me, it was the project of a lifetime, yeah. I would say. Yeah. You recall how long that runway is? 10,000 feet. 10,000 feet. Yeah, so it's uh, it was that's a big, like two miles, right? I mean, in a mile, fifty two hundred feet, something like that. And yeah, fifty two eighty. I think. Hey, yeah. I was close. Yeah. I was close. So um, yeah, it was uh, it was watching. I'm probably not the most gifted person at our firm, <laughs> but I would say that we did a good job of putting a lot of gifted people together that made it look like a survey ballet when they shut down that long runway. It was yeah. very exciting to be a part of. That's a good way to put it. You know, when you were sitting here talking about the Air Force a second ago, it dawned on me. Parker Land Surveying is female-owned and veteran-owned. That's right. Um, Pam it owns 51% from day one. And like we said, that was the as an accountability piece uh, for me. And um, she and I worked together in a large multidiscipline firm together uh, before Parker and um, she was human resources, so she brought the people part to the table, and I worked hard to become licensed. I wasn't the smartest, but I was too dumb to quit. <laughs> That's a good trait to have. You all worked together before you started this company in 2008. That's correct. You already knew how to do it then. Yes. Yeah. How long did you work together before? Ten years. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're going on 25 years almost. Yeah, almost. Yeah, and most of the folks that work with us at Parker... Uh, worked with us before, yeah, and um, so we have several multi generational family members that work together. Uh, we had a gentleman 
who was a Korean War veteran. Uh, Mr. James Barger retired last year, and he was 89, and he was probably the smartest, even out of the younger bunch, uh, when he retired. Um, so we don't have much turnover. Yeah. 50 employees, where do you see yourself in five years, 10 years? Um, right now, I would say that in five to 10 years, we will have had a lot of our senior staff retire. And so we're working proactively to mentor the younger folks now so that um, we can bridge that um, when it comes and not have any deficiencies. Our goal is to increase our technical competency between now and five years. That way we're on top of whatever is happening then instead of wondering what happened. Yeah. Might you have an office outside of the Low Country? Uh, we might. Uh, we like the upstate a lot. Yeah. Um, we like Columbia. Uh, we're kind of touching Myrtle Beach now from Georgetown. So um, we have some clients that do business uh, in Greenville. So we we would we would definitely consider that. Steve, I'm going to get you out of here on this. Uh, we were talking earlier, and uh, I heard a. a a nice piece of trivia that I found fascinating. Um, three of the four presidents on Mount Rushmore were surveyors. That's correct. Which three? Um, I think it was Washington, Jefferson, and Lincoln were all surveyors at some point in their careers. I guess they figured out there was more money in politics, <laughs> but um, at some point they were expert measurers yeah. as well. And they must have been trustworthy people. I don't know. <laughs> Back then, probably. Back then, yeah. I don't back know then. about now. Right, back then. Uh, I doubt any politicians these days have a surveying background. I agree with that. So the, the, fourth, the fourth person on Mount Rushmore, who is that? I think it's Roosevelt, I think. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, I don't even know who that is. Right, was. well, you only need to know the three of them. That's right. That, I, have that, a that's picture, the... I have a picture outside my old office in Hanahan of Mount Rushmore. We were going to try to get there as a family Yeah. just to... Because I tell everybody I meet that, and it kind of blows most people away because they don't realize. Right. They Most people don't realize what surveyors do. Yeah. So. Right. But they're really smart people that are trustworthy. Uh, of course they are. Of course they are. What I think you need to do is to Photoshop your face onto Mount Rushmore in place of Roosevelt. That's a great idea. And uh, have that in your office somewhere. <laughs> so when you get that done, shoot me a photo of that. I want to see it. Awesome. Folks, that is Steve Parker. Steve is the president at Parker Land Surveying. His wife, Pam, the CEO, I wish she could have joined us, but I wish she, she could too. Maybe next time. Next time I'm in Charleston, I'd like to meet her. Folks, that is another episode of Coffee With. Thank you for joining us. Stick around on SCBiz TV. See if there are any more episodes you'd like to see. You know what? We've got almost 150 business-related videos now. Plenty stuff to binge. We'll see you next time.